Okay, so chapter four, we're going to go fairly quickly and I'm going to give you guys kind of the rundown. So I have assumed you all have read the chapter. I have assumed you all have listened to Dr. Elson's lectures. So we're going to start with unknown one. So what are we noticing? Lots of sebaceous glands. Okay, so that means it's probably some sort of sebaceous mycoplasm. But what else is going on here that would be different or unusual? Hmm? African glands. So, let's see, I turn my arrow on. Maybe, there we go. So, yes, so you have African glands. And if we had had any clinical information, this is not necessarily someplace where you would expect to have African glands, right? What else do you notice at low power? What's missing? Hair. Terminal hairs, right? So you've got a couple there, but otherwise you don't really have any. And then this isn't the nicest example, but kind of in here, what do you have going on? Papillomatosis. So what do we want to call this? The nevus. The nevus. Good. So they talk about the acronym is broad, because they're usually fairly big. Bald, which is the lack of the terminal hairs. Bumpy, which is the papillomatosis, and bubbly, which is the sebaceous lobules and the dilated African glands. Okay? So, any questions about nevus sebaceous? And you don't always have all of those things, especially the papillomatosis, if you're pre pubertal. Pre pubertal. Okay? Okay? So, any questions about nevus sebaceous? All right. All right, number two. This should look familiar. Ooh, let me put this in focus for everybody at home. That was terrible. Sorry, guys. representative of what we're looking at. So, anybody? This is what we call the rolls and scrolls. Oh, the proliferating. So, yeah, proliferating uh, pilar cyst. And what you've got is you've got the pilar type of matrix. You've got the abrupt keratinization, okay? And then the rolls and scrolls are what happens because this thing is proliferating and it starts to collapse on it in on itself, which gives you the rolls and scrolls look. Okay? So that one you guys should have seen in another chapter, so we're not going to spend too terribly much time on it. Okay? And what's in your differential when you see something that looks like this pattern? Pilometric coma. Yeah. Which, incidentally enough, <laughs> we have right here. Wow. There we go. Okay. So the difference between a pilomatric coma and a proliferating pilar cyst. The other term for those are ghost cells, which you'll hear, I've heard more often, but shadow cells, ghost cells, same thing. So you've got these ghost outlines or shadow outlines of what the cells used to be. And then up in here, you've got this matric, matrical type of epithelium, so it's really basally, um, and it looks like it belongs to the matrix of a follicle. Okay, but the biggest thing, the biggest thing is the shadow cells are your biggest clue to tip you off, okay? And then if you were worried about pilometrical carcinoma, the things you would see would be more of an infiltrative border where this one's nice and well circumscribed, right? 
So an infiltrator border, lots of atypia, lots of mitosis, um, and, and some necrosis in there. And that's what would make you think of a pilometrical carcinoma. And that's usually, you know, out of long-standing pilometricoma. They still have the shadow cells? They will still have the shadow cells, but you'll have far more necrosis, like actual dirty type of necrosis, than just the, like the coagulative necrosis of the shadow cells. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I really dislike that what's on the screen is not what's in my microscope. Okay. So thoughts? The glasses one. The glasses one. Good. So this, what is the glasses one? Trichoadenoma. Okay. Good. So. He talks, Dr. Elston talks about the glasses or the toasted oat cereal for this one. And you've got these rings of infundibulum. Okay. Um, so they talk about kind of the red donuts in the, in the uh, stroma. <coughs> and that's just kind of what I think of when I think of trichoadenoma. So it's mature. Right, it's infundibular, and then they kind of look paired or like eyeglasses or the toasted oat cereal. Okay, questions about that one? Okay. All right, so this one's classic. So this is that mama and her babies. So that so trigofolliculoma, good. So you got mama follicles, which are these big central ones, okay? And then you have all of her babies surrounding her, and every one of them has an actual hair shaft on it, okay? You may not see it in the cut, but they're mature follicles. And then in the mother follicle, you have multiple hair shafts, and a lot of times clinically these will have like a tuft of hair sticking out of them because you have so many different hair shafts, okay? And then the mnemonic that Dr. Elston likes to talk about is very long, yeah, yes. but very um, it might sink it into your head. So he talks about fingers of fully formed follicles <laughs> forming follicular fibers, okay? So I remember mama and her babies, and they should all have hair. <laughs> That's how I remember it. But whatever helps you guys, okay? But this is a really classic one. I and her babies again. Yeah. I think mama and her babies is much easier. <laughs> F. I'm an F uh, <laughs> to the seventh <laughs> power kind of guy. David is babies. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. So number yeah, six. Just so you've got nests of so blue basaloid cells, but the stroma is not really like that myxoidy stroma that you think about with basal cell. Sorry, guys. Not really what you think about with basal cell, okay? It's more kind of fibrousy and normal, like, hair shaft type. This one's a little paler, but same, still same idea, okay? Um, there's no clefting around between the islands and the stroma, okay? You can have clefts with stroma to stroma clefts. But you don't have them between the the neoplastic islands and the stroma, okay? Then you also have these structures here. What are those? Papillary mesenchymal bodies, and those are your friends, because sometimes this is really hard to tell from a basal cell carcinoma, especially in someone who's right on that age cutoff where they could have either, okay? So looking for those will help you out. So, more primitive, blue islands, fibrous stroma, papillary mesenchymal bodies makes you think of... Trichoepithelium. Okay, so close, so trichoblastoma and a trichoepithelium is a type of trichoblastoma. Oh. Um, and I think potentially in the book that this may have been the picture he took his trichoepithelioma from, mm -hmm. which makes it a little more difficult. But a trichoep is a type of trichoblastoma. Okay. Can you truly tell the difference? Yeah. Because I felt like some so other ones were like 
50 sometimes 50. it's sometimes it's hard and if you say either one i think that if we give you that diagnosis you guys will know exactly are you going to treat them any differently no no so um just thinking about that it's also how how mature they are at the time and i'll show you with the other examples that we have in the, in the box What's that? What was that again? That was a trico... Trichoblastoma. Okay, what's the difference in that and trichoepithelioma? <laughs> Sorry. We just talked about... <laughs> I, was <laughs> <completely> <laughs> <laughs> I was typing, I wasn't listening. Uh, oh, is this being recorded? Yes. yes. <laughs> Alright, sweet. Everybody can laugh. So, a trichoepithelioma <laughs> is the type of trichoblastoma. <laughs> right. David confused me because he turned around and said, what is that? I thought it was trichoblastoma. Sorry. So I think that the picture that he used for this one is <laughs> under trichoepithelioma in the book, which makes it a tad bit more confusing. Gotcha. Um, but if if we were to give you that, would you treat them any differently, Rob? No. No. You treat a trichoep and a trichoblastoma right. the same the same way. So um, trichoepitheliomas really can be a tad, tad bit more mature. Mm -hmm. um, so they're a little bit more well differentiated, and we'll see one. In a couple slides. Okay. And so I'll point them out. But if you call it either, I think that everybody's going to know what you're talking about. And it's not right. much of a difference. Okay. Okay? Thank you. No problem. All right. Here we go. What do we think? Trigolomoma. Trigolomoma. Okay, good. So, more pale. So, first of all, it's um, an inverted growth pattern, right? So it's not growing up, it's endophytic, not exophytic. The cells in here are paler. A lot of times they'll be really nice and they'll be clear, uh, but they don't have to be clear. Let me go closer. Um, you get this sclerotic collagen in the middle, right? So you can see that and then... Down in here, you kind of get this peripheral palisading pattern and a thickened basement membrane zone right in here, which is probably what gives rise to all of this sclerotic collagen in the center. Okay, but they're smooth lobules, right? They have basement membrane, so they're not infiltrative at all. Is this kind of like a clear cell endema, or you just look at the basement membrane there? The so the clear cell acanthoma has, it's not really an endophytic growth pattern, it's more acanthotic where mm -hmm. it gets thicker and you have that abrupt transition. This is more of an endophytic singular type of lesion so it goes, it dives a little bit deeper um, and it's follicular based. So that's kind of the big difference. So what, is, what are tricholomomas associated with? Hmm? Cowden syndrome. Know. So I remember them as tricholamumas. So it goes with Cowden syndrome. That's how I remember them. What else do you, do you get with Cowden's? Uh, definitely an yeah, This is renal. Oral renal. So it's a hamartomatous disease or a hamartomatous syndrome. So you get GI polyps, mm -hmm. like the juvenile polyps in the GI tract. You, and then they also have a big risk of breast, thyroid, um, and endometrial cancer. Mm. So they have a very small increased risk of um, GI cancers, which everybody wants to go immediately to anything that has a GI polyp has an increased risk, but this one is so tiny that the other um, malignancy risks outweigh it. Okay? Any questions about trichomomas? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, do we think this is good or bad? Bad. bad. So, why is it bad? It's a lot like So, okay. So, yeah. First of all, on low power, it's infiltrative, right? And you can't see that on the screen. Sorry, guys. So, right in this area, it's infiltrative, and even on the edges, you can see that it's not a nice, well-circumscribed border. 
You guys mentioned the atypia, which when we go down closer, you can see a lot of pleomorphism, right? Even at this power, I can see a ton of nucleoli, which is not usually a good sign. Cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true surgeon. Um, and then when you cruise around here, there are tons of mitoses, and that's never good. So, what do we think that the origin of this one is? Well, sebaceous. Sebaceous, good. So you do have, do have some more like mature appearing sebacites kind yeah. of in the center here, and that should be your tip off that so this is sebaceous in origin. And, but based on everything else, what do we want to call it? Carcinoma. So sebaceous carcinoma, good. What would a polyp nature come uh, carcinoma? So it would look like a pi so it wouldn't have the sebacite. So you sometimes, and if it's nice to you, you will have scattered, vacuolated, mature appearing sebacites in a sebaceous carcinoma. And that's not always the case, and sometimes it's really difficult to tell. Okay. But um, the basaloid cells will look a little bit different. So pilometricomas or pilometrical carcinomas are based off of the matrix. So that um, kind of hair matrix epithelium. So they're a little bit more basaloid. They're not going to be vacuolated at all. You're not going to see that. And then you can still get the same type of necrosis, which this one doesn't have kind of central comedo type necrosis in it. Um, but you can kind of get the same thing in both. So it'll depend on, you know, can you find any mature appearing sebacites? And sometimes that's really difficult. Interesting. Yeah, you can stain it. So, if you don't have any vacuolated cells, what are you going? It's not necessarily going to help you, right? I guess not. So, we EMA. use what stain do we use? EMA. EMA, and that should highlight all the multiple vacuoles so in the, the sebacites, and it gives you that scalloped appearance on the nucleus, and that's what we're looking for. All right. So nine. Seriously? Why is this oh, syndrome yeah. on this chart? Why is it not? Syndrome. Why is this wet? Yeah, Actually, yeah. we did we did a combined settings. It's my thing. Isn't that here? Okay. It's wet. I think it's wet. That's what we All right. So origin? Fat. Fat? So, I see where you're going because you thought that these look a little bit bubbly, maybe like adipocytes. But since we're in the pylar chapter, I heard somebody else say sebaceous, and that is true. So, are they mature sebaceous glands? True. False. 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 Yeah. Why is it false? So what do mature sebaceous glands have a predominance of? Oh, I see. So clear, mature sebacites, right? Well, some are, some are. Hmm? Some are, some are, right? Well, yeah, most... Some are mature and some are not, right? In this one? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So in here you have... So these clear ones are the mature sebacites, and then you have more of the basaloid or germinative ones, okay? So if we have a mixture of mature and immature sebacites, what do we like to call these things? And it's a solitary papillary lesion. So, okay, so good. So that brings up a question of sebaceous adenoma versus sebacioma, okay? So this is still kind of controversial, but most people will use the term sebaceous adenoma for anything that has less than 50% basaloid cells, and they use the term sebacioma for anything that's got more than 50% of basaloid cells. But in real life, if we ever put that down, if we put either one down, you guys treat them the same and think that they're essentially the same thing, right? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Good. And what are we worried about if patients have more than one of these? Good. 
to Mirachore. And then how can we figure out pathologically? In my world, how, what, what do we do to so yeah, so same for what microsatellite? So it's usually MLH one or MSH two is where that, and it's a loss of staining, so which is a little bit different than all the other stains that we do, where you're looking for actual staining, you're actually looking for a loss of staining. Okay. Hmm. Questions on that one. Good. So ten. We're still in the sebaceous area, and so this one's got more than 50%, less than 50% basally cells. Less. Actually, mm -hmm. more. More. Good. So we'll call this one. The fat cells, sorry. It's okay. So we'll call this one a sebacioma. Some people will call them sebaceous epitheliomas, but I think that, that just confuses everybody. So. Okay? So, 11. Blue Islands, right? You can already see some peripheral palisading. What's wrong with the stroma? There's something wrong with it, per se. Good. So, it's fibrous. <laughs> So that makes you think that this is not a basal cell, correct? It's different, yes. Yeah. I could not trick James. So, fibrous pink stroma, blue islands. You have a little bit more mature areas that look like infundibulum, right? Kind of in here versus what's hanging out over here. You've got kind of some horn cysts. Right, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have our buddies. Ooh. Where'd they go? Mesenchymal body. So papillary mesenchymal bodies. So, blue islands, peripheral palisading, and a fibrous stroma, papillary mesenchymal bodies. More mature because you have horn cysts, right? Mm -hmm. What do we want to call it? It's just plastic. Track track so you're close. So this is just a trichoepithelioma. So it doesn't necessarily have that paisley tie pattern or the tadpole pattern that you think of with a desmoplastic trichoepithelioma. So the stroma is not quite as fibrous, but there's also not that central del. This is more of a papule or nodule, right? If there's a trichoblastoma, there would be none of those little... So you try and, yeah, most of the time it's they look more primitive, so it's just the blue islands in kind of the fibrous stroma. You'll still have the papillary mesenchymal bodies, but theoretically you should not have like the horn cysts and the more maturing things. But like we talked about, if you if you got either of those diagnoses, you treat them the same. Exactly, that's makes so. this whole chapter the mm -hmm. So, trichoepithelioma, okay? And then, what syndrome has multiple trichoeps? Brooks-Spiegler. spiegler And what else do they get? Cylindroma. Cylindroma. That's good. Yeah, I have a schedule book. All right, 12. What do you think that was good? So, basalite islands, fibrous stroma. No tumor stroma clefting. There's no, there's no real horn cysts, right? So the primitive blue islands. Let's see if we can find our friends. There's one. So what do I want to call this one? Trichoblast. Trichoblast. That almost looked like a cylindroma, James. Hmm? That one almost looked like a cylindroma. Yeah. If we could have gotten some sweet cuticle. 
Alright. Just the eyeglasses. Not quite, because they're not nicely paired. This is not trichoadenoma. Then I quit. Really? Yeah. Then I quit. Then I quit. Back it up. You cannot quit. That is the worst. <laughs> so uh, this guy kind of sort of looks oh, like a tadpole. Yeah, oh, that does. Dead bully. That's not spectacular. Dead death. Okay. Apple so death. Somebody said desmoplastic trico up for the regular trico up. Do you see how much more dense this stroma is? Yes. And how much more collagenized it looks mm -hmm. versus the other one, which just looked like normal follicular. <laughs> yeah, me too. Stroma. Uh, I'm saying trico had no in 20 minutes. Definitely. <laughs> I get to have a test on trico. So, this is the paisley tie pattern. But this is a desmoplastic trichoepithelioma. And it's fairly well circumscribed, right? So it doesn't doesn't really infiltrate down into anything. You have this fun central del. Okay, because what do these look like clinically? Donuts on the cheeks of young women. Which means that this stuff here is probably what? It's Dr. Ralston's favorite question. Makeup. Makeup. So, Makeup. because it is on the cheek of a woman. Okay? So, desmoplastic trichoepithelioma. Okay? Questions? Is it tough? It's tough. I think a lot of the pilar and the sweat so gland tumors are difficult. I agree. Alright, so 14. So, superficial biopsy, so there's only so much we can say about it, right? Because we don't see the bottom of it. So what differential do you want to put in here? Tadpole. Yeah, so the tadpole of the paisley tie, which no, is what four things? Mac. Mac. Serogoma. Serogoma. And morphia form basal stuff. Good. This one has a central cell that doesn't matter. Mm. 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 Maybe. Yeah. Your Maybe, the <laughs> but you'd really hate to miss uh, uh, my dread next right? Sure, you would. <laughs> so, so it's the same thing. I think you can miss a picture. Yeah. <laughs> but because it's so superficial, <laughs> you can't really tell, and you'd hate to miss something that's worse. Okay. So, so what would you read? What would you read that out as? Like a syringe I cannot rule out Mac, or I would probably read personally. I would probably read that out as like a. Add nexal, you know, but no, I wouldn't even say but differential. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, I probably call it. I probably call it in. Yeah, I probably call it an ad nexal neoplasm, and then put a comment saying like, because this is so superficial, without more clinical information, and without seeing, you know, the borders of the neoplasm, I can't rule out these things. So all of these four things are in my differential. I'd probably also call you up and say, um, I need you to get me more tissue. <laughs> Please. That's happened before. Mm -hmm. Lymphadenoma. Good. Yeah. So lymphadenoma. Wow. What's the oh, other gosh. name for a lymphadenoma? A adenoid something. Trichoplastoma. No, adamantoid. Adamantinoid. Yeah. Something with It's okay. And it's hard for you guys to understand why that is, but there's a an adamantinoma of the bone and an ameloblastoma of the jaw and this looks similar to that which is why they call it adamantinoid. So uh, double basal layer around the outside of these guys and then this reticulum inside the nest is made up of lymphocytes and histiocytes. But same type of stroma so it's still a fibrous stroma and you've got stroma to stroma clefting no stroma to tumor clefting. Okay. And this has a fairly <coughs> distinct appearance histologically. So, we good? Sixteen. This is your pink orb. 
fiber folliculum. Fiber folliculum. So you have a fibrous pink orb in the dermis. You have islands of follicular epithelium, but they do not... That's just normal follicle. But these <coughs> islands have no mature hair shafts in them. Okay? So if I cut this essentially right across here... And all you saw was this. What would you call it? Cylinder. A trichodiscoma. Mm. Yeah. So a trichodiscoma is essentially. It most people think it's just the way that it got cut, and you just don't see the follicular islands, and it's just the fibrous stroma. So when you say either one, you're still thinking of fibrous folliculoma. And what syndrome? Bert Hog Dubay. Good. So you get the fibro folliculomas, the trichodiscomas, and acrocordons. And then they also have the renal stuff. So the chromophobe renal cell carcinomas, the oncocytomas, and they can also get spontaneous pneumothoraces. So, questions about that? So rudimentary follicles, fibrous pink orb. Okay. All right. Almost there, guys. 17. Patchless follicle or big pore, right, in here. Mm -hmm. And then you have these huge acanthobatous fingers. So this is a pilar sheath acanthoma. Is there any difference between that and dilated pore or liner besides like how much acanthosis there is? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is an immature. So then this one is patchless follicle slash dilated pore, normal appearing pink finger projection. So this is dilated pore. Almost looks like a wordy D. I was just about to say that. Almost looks like a wordy, wordy D. Almost, but there's no actual dyskeratosis. So that... Several. Alright, this is, I'm not going to lie to you guys, this is my least favorite tumor ever. <laughs> so, plates of follicular epithelium just beneath the epidermis with multiple connections to the epidermis. It's like the grasshopper hanging on. Mm. Is this a grasshopper? David. For Tommy! Shut up. Dude, great work. I don't even know what that is. I don't even know that. It doesn't matter that you can. Right. Yeah, if you like can give me grasshopper, but you can't <laughs> tell me what the epidermis We just did that. <laughs> Is it that thing that's like <laughs> what is it? the hematoma, like the? It's the no, tumor of follicular infundibular oh, yeah, infundibulum. Oh, yeah. That is the grasshopper. Right out the show. I know what it was. So, oh, these you can, these you can tell that they're follicular, right? Because they're paler. They look more like follicular cells than they do epidermal cells, and they run as plate plates underneath the epidermis with multiple multiple epidermal connections. Okay. Good. Well, all day, day. Day. Damn, the grasshopper. Oh, grasshopper. That's all I had to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. I just know it's a grasshopper. So, 20. It looks like a grasshopper. What differential are we in? Paisley tie. Tuckle in spindle cell a little bit. Yeah. So is this on the good side of the paisley tie? Bad. Bad side, right? Because like mitosis, yeah. probably a mitosis. What? So the stroma's. This one's still pink because I think it's a thick cut, but it's kind of almost got that more homogenized oh. type of stroma in the back. Maybe a little fibromyxoidy. So, mm. what are you guys thinking about this one? What are you gonna call it? Not a Mac. Nope, not a Mac, because that looks really bland. Right. I thought the stroma, for like a more fee form BCC, the stroma yeah, would be like pinker. Yeah, so it is gonna be, this is pinker, right? Because it's not as blue and mixoid, but it's still got that kind of homogenized where it's not like the, the ropey kind of collagen that's in the dermis where you get the clefting between it. Um, so yes, this is a more basal cell. 
Huh. But you can see how it kind of looks like some other things, and that would be one you don't want to miss, right? Spiky tumor Yep, spiky tumor islands. Yes, yeah, spiky sclerosis. Alright, there you go. 21. This one didn't either. You have seen this before. Check the moon without clear sense. So. Mm, I understand where you're going, but not so much. So, do these look pale? No. Not so much, right? A lot of eddies. Hmm? There's a lot of eddies. There are a lot of eddies. Is this one of those sebaceous ones? It is not a sebaceous one. So I think that what you're seeing, these um, these holes aren't really bubbly, so they're just artifact of the keratinocyte vacuolization. But I understand where you're coming from. I think it looks like an IFK because it is endophytic in growth. It is labeled like it as an irritated sub. <laughs> irritated sub on the paper. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I think it looks like an IFK. Well, IFK is a sub, basically, right? Essentially, right. Oh, I'm, the alarm just it's not, <laughs> you're right. it's not, it's not super important to make the distinction, but, it is. Yes. <laughs> but, the, that, but it's just showing you, you know, take a look at stuff where you really have to figure out where the origin of the cells are because, you know, that could be confused with the trichelomoma. All right, last one, guys. Origin. Supercite. Sebaceous, good. Mature, immature? Mature. Pretty mature. Does it look like normal sebaceous glands? No, there's kind of too many of them, right? They're kind of too high. I don't really see them associated with follicular structures that are actually going to the surface, right? Sebaceous adenoma? Sebaceous hyperplasia. Mm -hmm. So the adenoma is going to have more basaloid cells and be less mature appearing. Okay? So questions on any of those? 19 was the tumor of follicular infundibulum. 